Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today, we got two transmissions in the back of the F-150. And we're heading out to an old friend of mine's shop. His name's Mark. Mark is the most knowledgeable person I know in the Honda community. And Mark is gonna be helping me make one transmission out of the two that are in the truck bed of the F-150. That probably makes no sense, but I'm gonna explain. I just gotta get some more stuff packed. Let's get going, boys. So it's 8.48 on a Thursday night, and I'm heading out to, again, like I said, an old friend's shop. Both of the transmissions in the bed of the truck have, they each have an issue. The GSR transmission, which is the one that was just on the $500 Honda motor, it works perfectly fine. There's technically nothing broken on it, but it's an open diff. The LS transmission that used to be on my built motor has a limited slip diff, but there's something wrong internally and the axle won't stay inside the diff. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking the transmission apart, checking what needs to be fixed and uh, kind of making like a Frankenstein monster out of GSR gearing, LS final drive and an LS uh, limited slip differential. It's gonna be really a Frankenstein transmission, which is kind of cool because I have a really Frankenstein engine too. New merch design boys is the Frick Winter design. Absolutely love it. Kearney and I worked together. We worked really hard on this design. I've been getting a ton of positive feedback from you guys, friends, family. I appreciate it so much. Like, thank you guys so much for all the positive feedback. The cool thing is not only can you support my YouTube channel by purchasing some of the Blown Motor Club Frick Winter designs, link in the description down below, but you also have a chance to win a full set of Injector Dynamics 1050 fuel injectors for your Honda B, K, or D series or H series engines. All the information for that will be in the description down below. Check it out, seriously worth it. It's like $500 in value. So even if you don't need them, you can always sell them online. Anyway, let's get out to, uh, let's get out to the shop. All right, so before we go any further, I just wanna let you guys know that this right here is the GSR transmission. This one has no known issues and it has an open differential. This is the LS transmission. It has a limited slip differential, but the passenger side axle has been popping out and it will not stay in this trans. So we are gonna take both of these apart and see what's inside of them. It's probably gonna be gears, but. out before I separate it? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Get everything out, put it, lay it out nice to the side, you know. When you do this swappy swap like this, like, dude, I I, I call it musical trans because, like, <laughs> people bring me, like, destroyed trans and then I have, like, I'm not even exaggerating, I'd have, like, three, four transmissions to make one sometimes. And, you got it's really easy to get really confused because you're like, you know, where, which one's what, you know. Uh, what's your method to pop it? Okay, so, easiest way to pop it is right here. Yeah. Get in there, Sweet. pop that. And then just you know give one another side and kind of walk them up. So, did you pop a snap right now? No. I open it up yeah. and pull up on it. No, just just no, you don't have to do anything. Just just literally open it. Just open it and it'll it'll probably drop below the the line of it. Most likely, not for sure. Oh, I see. So now you can take it by hand. So, don't hit the dowels. Okay. Don't hit your head. This way? Yeah, it goes that side. way. And then just, just pop it down. Kind of funny how this camera and table is set up. It's like Mark and John's cooking show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, I need to remove the shift fork stuff, right? Yeah. What's so that called? Like what is So that's that's called? for that's reverse. Okay. So and then you got and then this is the shift selector and there's three cool. tendrils for this. Alright, sweet. I think going nowhere. The only thing I could fall apart is this one. So you just you know, focus on that. And just anywhere. Yeah, sure. All right, right here. Anagram, so now you got these two on here. Just take these off too. 
Now, see that, see that taper? You probably know that. You want that out. No, I didn't know this. Okay, so, so see how this washer's tapered? See how it's tapered? Yeah, off? yeah. So this, the way that works is that one, that one cones up. This yeah. is just a flat one. And that kind of helps with the deflection. When it pushes down, it kind of keeps tension. Gotcha. Cool. Okay, so now we need to figure out what the, what the plan is. So the plan is that diff is going into this trans with these gears, right? Ideally, yeah. Okay. Well, hold on. First, we have to verify that this diff is still good. This is good. Why would it be bad? Because the axle is popping out of it. Okay, pop it out. Let's see. Sure, it was an axle. That axle in this trans was fine. That axle in this trans was kicking out. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. There's no way for me to tell. Honestly, you're just gonna have we're just gonna have to put it in. And if it's bad, I'll take it back apart. But it's it's just I can tell you this, it's not common. What usually happens if anything, it's usually the wrong size axle or something like that. So. Okay. Could uh okay, so I know I mentioned before like uh I didn't I probably didn't shim it properly. I don't even think That's I shimmed it at all. It doesn't matter. That wouldn't affect like where the diff sits in no. relation to the What you're doing when you're shimming this is you're you put it into this trans and all you're doing is you're shimming you're not actually shimming the gear up or down. You're just shimming the distance between the trans case and the bearing. Okay. Which has no relation to anything. Unless let's just say the shim was like a half inch, of course you could crack this case, but it's not. They're thousands of an inch. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yep. We could check the shim. That's we could check the, the shim and if we have to switch it, we can switch it. It's not a problem. Okay. It just takes a little more jacking around, but it's not, it's not a big deal. So. This is LS tranny, right? That's LS tranny. Okay. This is all LS stuff. Okay, gotcha. This is, G, this is the GSR. Yep. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is we'll, we'll clean the trans. We can check the differential clearance. And then we can switch the counter shaft. And then we can put this thing together. So let's, let's scrape this thing clean real quick. You want a try? What's that? You want a try? Oh, I love one. I got a lot of flavors, so I'll tell you what I got. I got black raspberry, I got orange, I got berry, passion fruit, and I got blueberry. Uh, Let's see. 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 Two bolts. Okay. Let's put in two, three bolts. Check it anyway. Yeah, so this is, this is you know, if you read the manual, this is the spec. So clearance, and then it just saying the standard is four, four thousandths. So of an inch. And then just give sizes. But we'll, we'll measure off of that and go from there. So. And what is that four thousandths of an inch? Like all your, all that? that is is the gap, the, basically the the spacing between the bearing and that shim. Gotcha. So just so it has a little bit of deflection or movement, I guess you could say. So what I, like what I usually do is I'll I'll just put it together with whatever you had or people had, and then adjust accordingly. Sometimes it'll be too tight right off the bat, so then you just gotta either take it out and do some math here, which we'll do. Go ahead, pop that case back on. Too tight? It's too tight, yeah. What I do is just go in there. Just go like oh, okay. So, let's see what we got. So, 51 thousandths is what this is. Let's just try one more time here. We can convert it to metric if you want. 51, 52. So 1.33 millimeters. There's only so many sizes too. So, so that this is 1.3. So to go down, we go 1.2, which is 047 or 043 or whatever. So we'll just we'll just have to see what we have out of those. What I usually do now is I'll instead of look for that is I'll put this back on and I'll measure it and then I'll just subtract the difference, you know, to see that way I'm not putting in 10, 20 shims. Most likely it's going to be you know around 50 thousandths or so. So we'll start with that. Okay. 
So the shim that you had, obviously the shim you had was from that trend, so we can't say it was right or wrong, right? The, yeah. shim, the shim that we took out of that trend, we put it in this case. Yep. Just to take a first measurement, we couldn't get any clearance between the um, bearing and the uh, this thing. Sure. Sure. <laughs> okay. All right, so anyway, so yeah, it was, that was a little bit too tight. So we took it out, measured it. I came up with 0.49, so 49 thousandths. It was our clearance with no, with no shim in it. So between right. the shim and the bearing was 0.49. We need roughly 4 thousandths clearance. So that means we need all, about 0.45. And of a shim. Of a shim. shim. Obviously, it'll make every size, you know, within right. a thousand right. or so. It's plus or minus. So the closest shim on that is 1.1 millimeters, which is 043. And I okay. Have. So we're good. Sweet. Yeah. We'll put that in and we'll switch the gears and be good to go. Awesome. Cool. I'll do this one. You can do that one, okay? Cool. But Sounds good. Just make sure the gear don't spin in your hand because it hurts. So I'll just get a, give it a good grab with whatever rag you got. Get this bad boy. What you do now, this is where you got to do it just correctly. Pull it down. And that's it. Oh, that's like the, that's like the, you know, <laughs> Yeah, 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 pull the tablecloth table. out. Or, yeah. <laughs> Take that washer off too. Okay. Not good, but you'll see this. See this washer kind of tapers a little bit too. Tapers oh yeah, which way? It goes out. The taper on this. One. Okay. So like that. Yep. Straight down. Straight down. All right. All right. Okay, more. Go again. Yep. Again. Okay. Now pop. pop pick it up. This, this one will come off. Okay. Now do it one more time, and uh, actually you be you should be good. Go ahead, do it one more time. We're good. Now this shaft should pretty much come right out. Yep. Good. Woo! Bada bing, bada bing. Just to quiz you, what shaft, are we, what shaft are we using? Uh, oh, no, I know, I know, I know. I know which one we're using. Uh, this one. Yeah. I was yeah. saying it starts getting confusing as hell, dude, when you got parts everywhere. You're like, oh, shit, which one was I using again? Well, you'll know if you put it in because the gears don't work. So, anyway. All right, so we're using, we're using that shaft right there. Would you like to assemble this, John? Yep. Okay, cool. So, you know, I'll grab this. Like let's just say for instance, I mean, I know where everything goes, but just to keep it all together. This inside here, you can see the friction dampener. So it's kind of hard, but this is what this is what a lot of people mess it up right here. So this little guy right here, and you see these tiny little teeth on there? Mm -hmm. It's got to go into those little grooves into there. So what people do when they do them sometimes, like I've fixed a ton of them, and the friction dampener won't be into that spot. It'll like sit on top and it'll 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 be too high and the gearing sometimes will just not work out properly. So then you're gonna come over here and you're just gonna slide this on. So once you take you're gonna take it like a whole unit because right now it can't fall apart, right? Nothing's gonna fall apart and it's 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 on there very easily. So you're just gonna come on here. You're just gonna slide this on as one unit all the way down to the bottom. Yep, that's it. <clears throat> that's that. And then usually what I'll do after. Are you not all the way down? What is that? You're not all the way down this way. Okay. Uh, what am I? Let's see. Look at that. There you That's go. That's it? Now you're down. Yeah. yeah. Once you push so, that down, it's going to hold the feet of that down. Cool. So I flip this over. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's going back the same way it came out. Yeah. Sliding this over the counter shaft. You're good. And that's it. And just slide the bearing in there in between the two? Did I flip this already? I flipped it <laughs> Okay. That's it. Cool. Okay. This is where you're saying be careful, otherwise you can crack your uh, teeth. Um, I mean, it, it wouldn't be imperative. Uh, if you hit it, like, in, inside kind of, like, if you hit the teeth inside, but if you hit it at the right angle, and then a lot of times what I'll do is when I get to here is I, I have, like, a pipe, well, actually it's already on, but I'll have a pipe and I'll smack it with the pipe, because the pipe will be, like, inside there. This one, this one will, pretty smooth. This, this will probably go on. Yeah, it'll go on. Sweet. Okay. And then yeah, this one like this. Take out the snap ring spot up and then take that hammer. This one? Yep. And start, start tapping down in the middle. Uh, right? Should I be hitting the center? Yeah. This one.
So next is this washer and this nut. And which way does the washer go? Uh, it goes taper up. Yes, right. That and yep. then nut. Yep. And am I torquing this? Yeah, we'll we'll do that last. So just hit it. It's eighty. It's about eighty. I usually do that. It is exactly. 80. You can go. You can go. Oh, you're not, you're not. Okay. 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 We're gonna put in the gears, um, and just make sure everything rotates okay, right? Yeah. So you can go ahead and do that. You don't have to put the forks in or anything yet. But grab okay. that one on the right. Left. Put them together. Straight. Pop them in. See what they look like. Uh, yeah, just like that. And then you just gotta put them all in, basically in here. In the middle, neutral setting. And then just reach your hand like underneath and just spin the gear shaft and make sure everything seems like it's twisted enough. I need to pick it up and do it at an angle, kind of like we were, I was doing earlier. Yeah. Yeah, so everything seems smooth. You would know right now if, if gears were fighting. I mean, obviously once we put the case together, it would bind it up. But right now you want to start feeling if any problems, like if there was any gears that were like the ratio was wrong, like let's just say we were switching gears and we accidentally put this, you know, gear from that one. You would you would start feeling it, like the, the shafts would kind of like be spreading apart or whatever. I see. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Do we leave these in? Do we need to take these? No, out? we gotta take them out. We gotta put the forks back on. It, okay. So. Forks going first. Yeah. Right. No forks going with it. It all goes as one. Right. Did you put it all together as one unit when you did it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I just like kept everything together because I watch. Like, I do not. You watch YouTube. I watch YouTube video on <laughs> how to do it, and then I made a YouTube video on doing it. <laughs> There's one last thing I do want to check here. Oh, cool. All right, so let me think about this. We got that, we got that. That's torqued. These are all torqued. Okay, yeah, you can go ahead and slide them in. Jive. <laughs> that's it? Yep, that's it. So after after I do that, I always just shift everything. I, every, I'm always, I always constantly try to check the shift thing just to make sure. Because if you know if something's like total, like, it's not always gonna be smooth, but if something's totally binding up, then you know you're probably, you know. How do these uh, synchros look to you? Uh, you know what, honestly, I didn't even look at them, but the synchro itself doesn't even matter, it's the hub and slider. Okay. So this right here. When I shifted them all, they all look pretty good. Or they all felt really good. So, yeah. No, they, I mean, at, at a glance, they look, they look really good. It doesn't matter, where they, I've seen them where they look perfect and they shift and grind, and I've seen them where they look horrible and they don't. So you just, I get all those questions, obviously, it's, it's yeah. Yep, reverse, reverse. goes here, slot. it goes this way, no, this way, yeah. it's a little it just goes in the pin, yeah. yeah. Well, for, at first you can do that, but at first what you're gonna do is just pick it up like this, mm -hmm. and then just wiggle it back and forth, and then it probably will click in. Did it go? I'm pretty sure I heard it go. Flip. Yeah, flip it right now. Look. I think it did go. Yeah. If it's in the groove, it's good, right? Yeah. Yep. Cool. See, this is an unmolested trend. It actually goes together nicely. <laughs> if this thing's been taken apart 20 times, you should be like, you know. Gotta put the fork on it. Are, are you gonna you're gonna use your other bearing? Yeah, yeah. The other one's from uh, ACT Clutch. So. I would just put that. I would just put. I would just put it in there so you don't lose it. Do you have it in here? Is the other one in here? Uh, I don't think so. Just make sure it's a Japanese bearing. All right, boys, we are on our way home. It's like one in the morning. That was really fun. I learned 
uh, a lot more than I ever thought I was going to. Obviously I installed the limited slip diff myself, but I had no idea what I was doing. I had no one to ask questions to, except for YouTube obviously, but that was super cool. I'm really excited to get this motor put together and in the car so that we can test out this trans. It's honestly a really cool setup because it's GSR uh, gears one through five, but it has an LS final drive, which is like the longest final drive out of any of the B series transmissions. So with that said, I think it's gonna have like a perfect middle ground between how short the GSR gear ratios are and how long the LS gear ratios are. I think it's gonna have like a perfect middle ground. I'm, I'm really excited to see how it feels. All right, boys, I am beat. Mark made it very clear to me that he has no problem with being on camera, but his intentions are not to be on camera, like just for the sake of, you know, promotion or anything but i do still want to say like huge thank you to mark because my transmission issues have been probably my biggest like stress factor when it comes to this new engine setup so now that the transmission is reassembled and fixed and ready to go we should be on track to getting this motor done and into the car i'm not gonna put a date on it but we're on track to make it to auto motion in may which is awesome so anyway merch link in the description down below uh, I'm going to be ending the video here. Thank you guys again for watching. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you guys so much for liking and subscribing to my channel. I work a full-time job. I do YouTube. I work really hard at this, and I appreciate all of your support. So uh, I'm so exhausted, as you can probably tell. I, I never stay up this late on like a work night. As I always say, boys, let's remember to plan, commit, execute, and attain our goals. Bye. I love you. Hi, Mom.